We all know and love the National Weather Service website, where we can look at a map and point and click to get the forecast nearest to us. We're going to see how to do that using the raw NDFD grib data. Welcome to another MetPy Monday. Hello, I'm John Lehman, a software engineer for NSF Unidata. This week, I want to look at grib data, which we haven't done in a while, and specifically, we're going to use NDFD forecast data to create a time series forecast for our particular location. Now, we've looked at NDFD grib data before making a map, and we've looked at making time series from models, but really, the NDFD is this nice blend of a human looking at and assessing a current situation, guided by models, and we're going to try to make a time series of that, sort of a local forecast like you would get if you click on the map on the Weather Service website. And for that, we're going to need our imports. I'm going to import pygrib, import numpy, matplotlib.pyplot as plt. From date time, we're going to import the date time object, the time delta object, and time zone. And from metpy.units, I'm going to import the units registry. So first, I have already downloaded the grib data locally. We talk about where to get grib data in some other metpy Mondays earlier, so be sure to check those out. I'm going to use pygrib's open command. And I'm going to get the temperature grib data that I downloaded. Now I need to get the lats and lawns, but those are stored in the grib messages. So I need to get a grib message first. So we're going to get a message. It's a grib message. And remember, grib messages start at 1, not 0. OK, so I've got a message. My lats and lawns. I'm going to extract from that message with the dot lat lawns method. And then, because grib is just a series of messages all in a row, and we play through those, I'm going to need to call rewind to get back to the beginning of my grib file. So now I've got the lats and lawns. If we look, it's a 2D array, and there aren't any repeated values because it's really a square grid, which means that we don't have just a row of lats that are all the same or a row of lawns that are all the same. Okay, so I need to know which Latin lawn point is closest to where I want to be. So in this case, we're going to look at Boulder, where Unidata is located. And we'll say 40.015 for our lat. And our lawn is minus 105.270. Okay. So now, how are we going to calculate what the closest point in this 2D array is? Well, we're going to calculate the distance as a square, and we don't need to take the square root. Uh, it's unnecessary in this case and just is extra computational load. So the distance squared is going to be lats minus target lat squared plus lawns minus target lawn squared. We want to get the minimum index, or where the data are the smallest, uh, where that distance squared is the smallest. And we can use that using argmin from numpy. But that's not quite going to work, because argmin is going to give us just a value of the array as a 1D array, so you know, the 128,000th index, not a 2D index. But to get around that, we can use another handy NumPy function, unravel index. And it needs to know the shape, so we're going to give it our original distance squared array dot shape, and that will return to us a 2D index that's going to be the position of the closest Latin lawn. So first, let's just look at min index. Okay, there it is. And if we look at lats, 
min index 40.0207. That's pretty close. Lawns, negative 105.276. All right, so we are within a grid cell or two and a half kilometers of where we want to be. That's perfect. Now we're ready to actually go back through the messages and pull out, in this case, temperature data, because this is a temperature grid file. So I'm going to make an empty list for my temperatures, an empty list for my times, and then we're going to loop through the messages. So for messages in grib, because remember we have to go through these in order. Uh, let's see, times.append, message.validate, when that grib message forecast is valid. Temperatures.append, message.values, and we're going to get just the value at the min index, not the whole forecast grid. So we're scrolling through all of the messages and we're done. If we look at times, we've got date times. Notice these are naive date times. They're not aware of their time zone. And temperatures, we have temperatures that we hope are Kelvin, uh, but again, there's no units attached to those. So let's fix both of those issues. Temperatures are probably the easiest, so we're gonna start there. Temperatures degree Fahrenheit, it's going to be our temperatures. We're going to attach units, Kelvin, to them, and then tell them that we want them in degrees Fahrenheit. The date times now, we need to attach time zone info for UTC time, and then we need to convert them to central. So I'm gonna call them date times UTC, and I'm gonna use a list comprehension here. Call the replace method. Set the time zone info to be timezone.utc for every date time in our times list. I'm going to create a mountain standard time, specifying as a time zone, a time delta of hours, and they're currently seven hours minus seven from UTC. Okay, date times local is going to be date time dot as time zone mountain standard time for date time in date times utc using another list comprehension there so now finally we're ready to plot this data i'm going to use plot dot subplots to simultaneously create my figure and axis instances going to plot date times local and temperatures degree Fahrenheit in a tab red color. Let's just see if that works to start with. And it does. The labels could use some work, but we see a time series. So I'm going to set the X label to be local time. Set the Y label to be air temperature in degree Fahrenheit. And I'm going to put a horizontal line on at 32 units degree Fahrenheit. We'll make it cyan and dashed to indicate when we're above freezing. So we can see Boulder's going to be quite cold, uh, down uh, below 10 Fahrenheit uh, for a couple of days here, and then we'll get back up above freezing. So that's great for these fields with more instantaneous values like temperature. But let's look at a slightly different grip file now, and that is snow. Okay, so I'm going to do much the same process here. I'm gonna get a grib by calling pygrib dot open, get the snow file, times snows for message in grib times dot append message dot validate snows dot append message dot values min index. 
Now I'm not going to bother going through the conversion again uh, for time. You've seen that and can adopt that easily on your own. But what I want to show you is if we plot the time and snows, we see this value going up and down. So does that mean that snow's melting? No, this is the forecast snow accumulation in that time block. So if we really want to see the amount of snow on the ground, assuming that there's no melting, we can use a cumulative sum and see that over the next three days, the period of this forecast, we get a rising snow total. Now keep in mind that we do get above freezing here, so that's potentially going to go back down, but that's one way to deal with this data. So I hope that you found this useful and that you can use PyGrib to work with the National Weather Service NDFD forecast data. And now you know how to find the closest point to you and extract a time series. I'll see you on the next MetPy Monday.